In this video, I'm going to show you three different options for adding roughness variation into your textures, into your layer setup. And roughness is an extremely important property, a very important channel that will introduce that realism to your materials. Because every single prop, every single environment asset needs to have roughness and especially needs to have roughness variation to make it appear as it does in the real world. And roughness displays how shiny and how reflective or how dull and rough a material is. And most objects in the world needs to have roughness variation introduced so they appear more real. So let's get into it. Now there are two different PBR workflows that you may be using, metallic roughness or specular glossiness. And because this tutorial is focused on roughness, this is a metallic roughness PBR workflow, which is what UE4 and UE5 uses. But if you happen to be using specular glossiness PBR workflow, then you simply follow this tutorial and invert the values that I am using. Because roughness is exactly the same as glossiness, just simply invert it. So roughness defines how reflective and shiny or how dull and rough the surface is. And every material in the real world has roughness to it. So for example, if I drag one of these standard materials, such as this concrete, onto this plane, you can see that there's some shininess with some variation of dullness going on. And this would determine the realism of a material. And depending on the type of material, the type of surface that you are creating, some will be more dull and others will be more shiny. And a roughness texture is always grayscale, black to white, where white is rough and dull and black is shiny and reflective. And the values are always between zero and one, with one being white and zero being black. Now that's for metallic roughness PBR workflow, but if you happen to be using specular glossiness workflow, then black is rough and dull, which is value of zero, and white becomes shiny and reflective, which is value of one. Now some materials will have roughness already part of the setup, both for standard materials as well as smart materials, but some will not and you will have a even value across the entire surface that does not look realistic. Such as, for example, this terrazzo floor in the standard materials. You can see that when you look at the light, just right, you can move the light to see the roughness better or just position a camera so the light hits it just right. That's how you view the roughness. Because if you just look at it straight down or at a certain angle, you're not going to be able to really tell what the roughness is doing. So you have to look at the light just right. So you can see for this terrazzo material, it's an even value across the entire surface and there's no breakup. There's no roughness variation and it just looks too clean. And you need to add some roughness variation, whether you are working with standard or smart materials or when you are building your layers and your materials layer by layer, you need to have roughness variation controls. So let me show you how to add that roughness variation. I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove these two layers and uh, oh, actually all of them. And let me create a brand new fill layer. And let's change color to it, just to something else other than gray. If you want to control how dull or rough or how shiny and reflective your material surface is, you have roughness controls right here. Default is 0.3, closer to black, it's going to be very shiny, very reflective. At zero, it's going to be very reflective. And then when you increase it all the way to one or white, it's going to be very dull and rough. So concrete, dirt is more towards the white value, more towards one and other surfaces are going to be more shiny, more reflective, closer to zero, closer to black. Now, most surfaces are not going to be this clean, so this is why you need roughness variation. So in order to add this roughness variation, I'm going to give you a couple of options. So the easiest way is to simply have some kind of black and white texture be used inside roughness instead of single values of zero to one. So you have that breakup. So you need to have variation of black and white introduced into this roughness via a texture. You can use any of the existing textures inside Substance Painter by switching over to textures and searching for grunge or dirt or just browsing through and seeing what's available. So let's go ahead and type in grunge. And you can take any of these grunge textures and just drag them and replace them inside into the roughness input of the fill layer. And this will simply replace the single value with that texture. So now you have some breakup. And then for this texture, if you scroll down, you have controls for balance. So you can adjust it, add some contrast or remove contrast. Or if you don't like what it's doing, just drag another one and replace it. And you can see this is already far more interesting surface. Just a simple roughness variation introduction. And again, when you're looking at a texture, white is going to be rough and dull. Black is going to be shiny. So if you take a look at the individual channel, this way you can kind of tell what's going on with the roughness texture and what it's going to be doing when you look at the light bouncing off the surface. And by using the balance and contrast, you can push those whites and blacks more or less. 
depending how much of an adjustment you want to make. So this is the simplest way of adjusting roughness and introducing variation by simply dragging one of the textures into the roughness input. Let's go ahead and clear this. The second way, the second option is by introducing a new layer. So let's create another fill layer and this is going to be our roughness and just simply disable all the channels except for roughness. So this way we are introducing a new fill layer with only roughness controls in it. And what this does, it will override the roughness value for the previous below layer. So right now it's the same because it's at 0.3 for both. But once you begin to adjust the roughness for the new layer, let's say we want it more shiny. It overrides the default layer below. So if I disable it, you can see it just simply overrides it by introducing its own controls for roughness within its individual layer. And then within this layer, you can go ahead and drag a texture into this roughness input, just like we did before. So let's say we introduce a new one. Let's do something else. And then we can also adjust the balance and the contrast for it. So this option allows you to have full control over within individual layer just for roughness instead of having it inside this layer where you have all other channels enabled and controlling everything else such as height, color, actually it's this layer right here. So in this layer you have all other channels that you are working with and sometimes you may not want to introduce roughness variation inside this layer and this one allows you to have its individual layer in Salamo cleaner and more organized because you just have one layer that's controlling roughness. And then by introducing a texture into it, you're introducing the variation that you need. And this third option is going to be the best option to use because you can now have roughness controls in its own layer, but then you will also be combining and using the roughness in the layers below. So let me go ahead and delete this layer so we get back to our standard material with its default roughness. And let's go ahead and create a new fill layer. Let's rename it roughness variation. For this layer, we're also going to disable everything except for roughness value, roughness channel. Then into this layer, right click on the icon and add a black mask. So black mask will hide the effect. Actually, let me undo this real quick. Let's adjust our roughness variation to something different than the layer below. So here's the default layer by itself and here's the roughness variation on top. So it overrides right now everything below. Then by adding a black mask, we are essentially hiding everything inside this roughness layer. Then into this mask, you want to right click on the icon, on the black mask icon, and you want to add fill. This introduces a fill layer into the black mask with values in order to control the opacity. However, we don't want single value because we're kind of getting back to where we had before, but now we can go ahead and input a grayscale texture into this. So let's drag any texture that we see here into this grayscale input. And then here we can also adjust the balance and the contrast. So this adds the variation, but it adds variation into the black mask in order to hide parts of the mask and show others by using the black and white value. So we're controlling our roughness through the mask and using the texture. And then we also now have control by going back to the layer, the roughness variation layer, and adjusting the value here. So not only do you have controls over the roughness using that mask, by changing the balance and the contrast. But now you also have additional control within the roughness variation layer of the material for the fill layer. And then if you go to the fill layer, if you change the value of roughness here, you will also have another level of control to adjust the roughness within this fill layer. So now you have multiple ways of just kind of using all these values and get the result that you need for your roughness variation. And this is completely non-destructive because you can come back and replace the grunge mask and what it's doing to the black mask, what it's revealing and what it's hiding by dragging another grunge texture. And then adjusting the balance in contrast and then going back to the roughness variation layer, maybe adjusting this. And then also going back to the fill layer if you need to and adjust it here as well. You can also switch over to mask view you can see what this mask is doing by selecting the mask. It's using the black and white values and grayscale in order to hide and show to reveal this roughness variation on top. So this method right here is the best method because you have full control over multiple values of roughness to get that roughness variation. So you can use any of the three methods and this last method is the one that I use most often because I have that full control. And one last thing, of course, you have the same setup you can use for any existing materials. So let's uh, bring back 
I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to bring back that uh, clean terrazzo floor that we have in inside standard materials. And if you wanted to add some uh, roughness variation on top of this, so it's not so clean, you just repeat the same process, the same steps. Let's use the third method. I'm just going to create a fill layer. I'm not going to rename it. You know what we're doing. I'm going to disable everything except for roughness channel. Into this roughness variation fill layer, I'm going to add a black mask. Into this black mask, I'm going to add a fill. And then let's drag a texture. Let's go back, search for grunge, and drag any grunge texture we want to use. Again, it's not uh, showing up very clean. That's because we just need to adjust some values for it. So let's uh, control our balance, our contrast. Let's go back to the layer itself and change the roughness here. So that way we can begin really see that mask and that texture grunge uh, take an effect. Move the light to see it better. Move the camera to see the roughness better as well. Go back to the grunge map and adjust more contrast and balance. Then maybe go back to the original terrazzo layer and then here you can adjust the roughness. Now you can see that this specific material has some roughness controls and many materials will have this as well, but many will not. And just going back between all these different values, let's uh, choose the grunge map that we're using and adjust contrast and maybe lower the balance. Here we go. We introduced roughness variation into this concrete terrazzo floor that we did not have before. And we can do this setup for any material or for any layers and the material creation that you're doing inside a Substance Painter. Very important for you to introduce this roughness variation and something you'll be using a lot. Now, if you're ready to take your Substance Painter skills to the next level, I have an in-depth tutorial course for you, Substance Painter Essentials. It will show you not only how to use roughness and add variations for roughness and how to work with roughness, but this course covers a lot more and it will get you up to speed, show you all the tips and all the techniques you need to know in order to texture your environments and texture your props using Substance Painter. This is an essential course you need to start using Substance Painter to texture. The course is available right now and I will see you in there.